Okay. Beautiful day. Um, what you hear in the background of this lesson, since we're still dealing with Max in the week four, I want um, the, the most, the greatest range of innovation and creativity from you, having all of the sources, working from the modules that Max provides, um, that this takes on, and, and also working with experiments with Google. <laughs> Um, to see what JavaScript examples have been left on. Here's a system. I knew I should have brought the screen down a little bit. Um, here is a system. JavaScript. Um, that has triggered a music um, musical response. Um, this is all in JavaScript. A lot of this stuff is left online. Um, controlling timber and uh, not quite the harmonies of a graphic equalizer. But let's hear what we've got going here. Um, scrolling upward. Um, we have this wheel and we play around with these levers. And as we can see, we have different um, inclusions entering into this, um, adjusting the timber of the system. Uh, bringing the lower half of the bands all the way down, the upper half all the way up. So, all the way down. Um, that's what they're suggesting. And bringing this up. And do we notice the dramatic change? I don't quite. So let's... Um, back out of there. Um, we want to create a sound sculpture again for one of our last exercises with Max MSP. We can do almost anything with it. Um, the concept that there's a grammar to scent, olfactory capacities, taste, as any good chef will tell you, uh, touch, I guess um, the the skin is the largest organ on the body, the epidermis. Um, sight, which seems to be the king of of um, the senses, um, thrusting us way back to the Cambrian explosion, where there's a, a, a sort of a creation of sight and armor at the same time. Um, and so forth. What we're doing now is laying down um, textures, a spoken word, atmosphere, um, to achieve emotion. As we saw in the video on um, the, the problem of, of the square, that even simple black squares can imply emotion from a, a, a framed out area. That's what we're going to try with these DAWs. Um, uh, uh, free DAWs, paid DAWs. Um, GarageBand is free if you have a Mac. Um, there are plenty of DAWs on, uh, on your cell phone. Uh, you can try those and move it up. What I'm aiming for in this 100 level class is maximum creativity with the tools out there. and. You can get lost in the tools. The tools are, you know, legion. They're a lot. Audacity is one thing. GarageBand is free if you have a Mac. Uh, Mac OS, super fun. It's been around, I think, 18 years or something like that. 15 years? I don't know. It's, it's fun. Ableton Live Lite um, is... Free Ableton, as we noted, actually comes from our VPL of choice, Max MSP, 
created by a German who put together these packages in MaximusP and made this DAW called Ableton Light. Um, uh, here's how it looks, same thing, time, put your, your uh, uh, selection in these time pieces and then run it. Trackaton waveform, never played with it. Pro Tools, of course. Uh, Pro Tools has a paid version. Uh, uh, when you started a DAW, you like to go on to work in professional studio. Yeah, that's it's got a professional version. Ohm Studio, Cubase, LE. There's Cubase regular. Um, uh, that is. Costia, Soundbridge, Reaper, where is that other, Studio One Prime, uh, MPC Beats, we're trying to stay away from the beats and melodies and just stay in uh, atmospheres as if we're constructing a landscape behind, as if we do not have, uh, making this device piece, as do we do not have cue points that a uh, stage manager would or board app would run in Q in Cubase. Uh, we use Cubase for uh, earlier um, and it did come in handy but we had a running staff of two or three people. Often you don't have that, often you don't have that in um, uh, 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 installations. Alright, let's uh, back up, we're talking about. Um, uh, I'm just trying to place uh, this one. Video isn't available anymore. Boo hoo, boo hoo. Um, um, we're going. Playing in and out of 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 VR. What are the grammars here? Is this some sort of way of teaching anti-bullying? This idea to simulate a reality. You see yourself in the mirror. Um, interesting concept again as we develop and find grammars um, in these new media it, it oh, we just hit that one sorry um, back up uh, moving down Harmony Hacker. Again, a audio reactive patch. Establishing the parameters, parametrics of what sound does, assigning values to it. Um, leaves us open for a conception here. We've got the clubby, kitschy, clubby sound going on there. Um, Um, some ambient sound. Ooh, I love these. Um, this is pretty old school. Um, a guy goes in and creates these sonic devices with metal bashing against each other. Metal rods. Um... tunes these and it's interesting creating like these drone effects look he has got the tiny ones the box amplifies the sounds even the architectural setting is uh, interesting 
Old school's the best school. Um, all analog, all spatial, eliciting sound from 3D objects. It's beautiful as a 3D object. Listen to this. It sounds like church bells in Europe. And it resonates in this little stone barn. Um, who, why, what, when, how did he get the capital necessary to weld this metal, assemble these things? Um, I don't know. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Harry Bertoia's sculptures. Um, just beautiful. Uh, inhabits that realm between sculpture, sculpture and um, let's uh, see a couple more of these audio reactive. This is obsolete test equipment, essentially garbage. Um, Yeah, I mean, what are we doing? Ambient stuff for this play, this work? Yeah, kind of. Okay, let's go. I work with the, the great Korean-American artist Nam Joon Pak, who dabbled with music, came from a classical background, um, was more or less a Dadist, um, and he did many things with the television as a sculptural item, which is reminiscent of this guy. All right, let's quit that. Um, what we've got here. This is more people using sculptural items, installation items, having people interact. Occasionally at the Museum of Design on Columbus Circle, they'll have some interactive pieces. I've seen some amazing pieces. Let's see what else. Of course, probably no two sequences are alike amazing um, going further um, these are sound sculptures these are, most of these are people are hacking up the analog taking objects that are already out there and turning them into um, works. This is interesting. In boxes. Oh, I like this one. Um, there was a, since the late 50s, 60s, there were, or oh, maybe even the 20s, um, concrete music, concrete sound was something made of two analog things coming together. Um, as objects, a repetition, these things are amazing. Interesting. What the heck is this? Um, oh, it's plastic fabric, or plastic bags. Very visually stimulating and sonically interesting too.
where they find these spaces to do these things is amazing. Um, it's great. Let's move on. Um, ooh, beautiful work again. Loop bottle. Um, Benjamin Franklin is reputed to have created the glass harmonica played much like this except with tops of of um, crystal glasses very interesting very ethereal sort of like the materials I'm asking you to plug in very beautiful um, we can take from reality certain things I've got a lot of spent electronics interesting way to play these things like he wets his hands somewhat. Interesting, interesting. Um, hold on. Moving on. Let's see until I get throttled. Come on. Get in there. Yes, I should click out of a few of these. Here. Click here. Click here. Click here. Click here. Click here. Click here. Um there let's go back could be um, in the free dogs let's get out of that um, titled Clip. quit out of that it might be throttling me a little bit Um, here's a sound sculpture called The Wing. Like playing a saw. Um, creative musicians, composers, sound artists are always looking for ways of using available material. Just the resonance of a sheet metal across her lap. Looks like she spot welded all these things on top of it. Do they come from classical knowledges? Do they study um, status quo instruments like you would find in an orchestra violin? It usually um, the principles of, of uh, harmony, melody, timber um, duration, things like this uh, exist through this. Um, let's keep going. And um, it could be throttled, sorry. Yes, it's kind of throttling me. Um, all right, so um, where, where are we going with this? We want no internet. Yes, it's, oh, Stellar, yes. Um, one second, I really wanted to show you. Let's shut down, turn it back on again. It often throttles me with these things.
Yes, I am connected to the internet. Go. Oh, come on. Um, uh, we are still on, gang. Namjoon Pack, I worked with Namjoon. Um, this is just, uh, he started doing these experimental things in the early 50s, uh, moved from war-torn Korea in the early 50s to Germany, and uh, still works out these concepts of, of uh, watch on YouTube, um, some reason I'm unable to see this future according to Nam June. Um, uh, okay, except all yes. Let's see. Yes, this works. Can art and technology unite the world? And this was a question that Korean artist Nam June Park spent much of his career exploring. Pat had a uniquely global view of the world at his time. Born in South Korea in 1932, he went on to live and work in Japan, Germany, and the United States. Travel at the time was difficult and rare, but Pat saw tech as a way to open up the world and share art beyond the So he had a little bit of a piano and a classical uh, music background. The internet. In 1974, Pop proposed building a network of electronic superhighways using satellites, cables, and fiber optics to connect um. cities. We could hold conferences between people in different locations via color video. It would become our so one of the innovated this whole concept of of Skype, of web chatting, and actually did this. That would be used for communication. Two, video is art. For his first art exhibition in 1963, Puck showcased a dozen manipulated TV sets. It was the start of his fascination with electronics. He usually manipulated with um, uh, magnets. He built TV robots, TV walls. Made his own synthesizer and broadcasted live events. Good evening, tomorrow. This is my friend, Misha. His groundbreaking work showed the possibilities of videos in art and paved the way for future artists. <coughs> Global satellite TG. Four, global media. In 1973, Pat predicted global satellite TV. In his video broadcast artwork, Global Groove, he announced This is a glimpse of a video landscape of tomorrow. Video and landscape. To any TV station on the earth. This was an ambitious goal, but Pat hoped that mass media could help unite the globe. Um, dealing with compression, layering, textures, things I'm having you deal with. Fifteen years later, his final video broadcast, Wrap Around the World, was aired to 50 million viewers in 10 countries, from the United States to Japan. Is that David Bowie? Five. Smartphones. In 1974, Puck wrote that one day there would be a mixed media telephone system for 1,001 new applications on which you can make video calls, watch TV, go shopping, and even get out. So Nam June predicted Puck all of these things. Would give us all the chance to make and share art. The invention of the camera changed the scene and made everybody into an active visual artist, he wrote, predicting this. There we go. Uh, let's get uh, back to um, uh, uh, Max MSP. Here's a, a, a simple um, uh, motion capture system. 
Let's try and bring um, this out, which captures the motions. Um, this is a, and I'm unable to move it, um, system of audio reactive spaces, which change the shape of the space within my um, uh, lineup system. Let's see if we can um, get the rest of the armature out here. Um, so a lot of these um, systems exist uh, already in um, this the simple mocap um, arrangement. Um, I put in a delayer, a tracker, a mix fader. Um, I uh, fool around and put jet dot window to pump it out. Pattern mapper here, um, and this thing is basically this. If we wanted to increase the sensitivity, I don't know what we'd have to do. We'd have to move more. Um, we've got the raw camera output. Um, uh, send uh, larger of uh, numbers to this uh, entry level here. Metro 33.3. Um, yeah, I don't know how fractalizer can come out. Oh, this is supposed to be having a lot more windows than just yes um, I made a bunch of windows here's more um, peppier image here I don't know what this is doing so this is kind of outlining the the whole work um, let's clear out of this one this is chewing up a lot of processor rate um, and this was the other day I showed you how to make shapes audio reactive. Uh, as we can see, uh, Namjoon was doing this in the um, early 50s through, um, I knew him just before he died, worked on a project on the border of North and South Korea, um, got some money from the Korean government and Hyundai and put an installation there, put up a couple of his big television cellos um, or, you know, right on the border, you know, across the river, there were landmines. It was the DMZ at Injingak and that Pamunjan, and um, it was a, a global celebration of peace. I tried to get in some internet service on this, and this was some of the last uh, months of Pax life. Um, he, uh, uh, had a large Guggenheim show and then another show of his work and um, soon passed away in the early 2003 or 4 something like that um, so this is um, let's see if my YouTube is working anymore no um, one more Oh, this is an interesting group, Survival Research Laboratories. Um, in the 80s, this group used to put together robots that would fight each other, make music. Um, we're talking about the loose ends of, of spectacle. And they were, uh, at the time of the Reagan Reaganomics and, and financier yuppies moving to New York and the major cities, the the um, uh, uh, kind of supply side economics this um, group responded to the board and actually created um, uh, uh, these bizarre surreal fighting exploding robots um, you say big deal we have those robotic shows now um, uh, yes but um, let's see I can't move my that was an arm that did something. It was um, predatory arm shield. Um, yeah, they did all of these things. The one of the leaders of this actually lost his 
Yes, this guy here um, lost part of his fingers in an explosion of his robot. Um, but these are, you know, you can only see it at the bottom. But this was a groundbreaking group. Um, I wish I could find some of their bigger works. It's interactive due to um, the infrared camera, like a connect, connecting it. Um, truly an innovative group used to pack in tens of thousands of people in stadiums just to watch their car-sized things. Um, um, yeah, it was a very specific way of, of, of making uh, technology express it in terms of... Um, of the dystopic aspects of technology. This is Stellark. I met this gentleman in Singapore. Um, he has recently gotten into bio. Um, oh, can we scroll? No, we can't. Um, 2019, he surgically created um, uh, uh, an architecture, a scaffolding on his arm for an ear with a permanent um, uh, speaker in it so he can talk to people on the phone, a cell phone in the arm on his, in an ear on his arm. Um, uh, these were some of his first uh, creations, create a third arm in 1982. 80, that's third hand that's somehow controlled by servers online and other people so the arm was totally involuntary uh, he started his training as an architect uh, prosthetic head articulated head um, uh, this is one of his first piece I can't scroll up where he's hanging by these fish lines with hooks in a gallery space um, uh, this was way back in the 80s, uh, upload from uh, the internet, these um, involuntary aspects from around the world. Um, um, this kind of uh, trackable spider, um, robot, um, sculptures, here he is lying above the arm, uh, ear on arm suspension, um, in uh, uh, typical relative concept of pain. Here he is with the ear implanted in his arm, speaking into it. Um, he seemed like a very personal, personable, interesting guy talking to him, and then suddenly he's rolling up his sleeve and showing us, me, this arm, uh, the ear that is surgically implanted in his arm. The first one didn't work and rejected it's um, uh, it's totally healed over and covered using basic CRISPR engineering. Um, uh, uh, kind of covered itself over with skin. Um, and this is how they did it. Ew. Um, put the armature in and then the skin was given an adaptive 2006. Yes, and met him 2007, I think. Um, in this um, and he's then placed a speaker in one of his teeth so he had this idea of of talking into the ear and then a speaker would come out other other people's voices would come out of his mouth from this speaker attached to his um, tooth um, he's dealing with virtuality very very prophetic um, uh, media artists, uh, a technology artists like Nam June, um, and here's extended arm. Uh, now that we have the uh, online computing power, this arm is controlled by other people around the world, sort of queued up. A commentary on a volition, I guess. Um, uh, and then he's getting into robotics, the way that. Uh, most people had been considering robotics um, also. 
Okay, that's Stellark. And, uh... Survival Research Laboratories. Is there any others before we do a little something here? Um, yeah, we've covered that one. Um, sorry, my extensions are jumping all over the place. Um, they still have shows, 2020. Um, I don't see them doing anything after COVID, though. Um, down. Hey, we've got something. This is the early 80s with Stella. Mm, this is the first time we've had it on. Uh, um, truly innovative, um, interesting. Steve Blake, 5, 4, 3, 2, let go. Yes. Um, Steve Reich. 68. Um, yes. Okay, come on. Um, so the feedback loop changes with the microphone in front of the speaker. Um, let's just end this with Lisa. Um, Lisa Park and Anonia. Okay, this is um, Lisa Park who did an exhibition at the Simon Center. Um, let's pump it down a little bit. So she took speakers, hacked up speakers put almost like frying pans. Um, I've had one of these. This is pretty complicated. And she's entering into this space. She's totally calibrated the harmonies with her mind. She's dealing with um, the way um, that her mind is sending different tones to the speakers, which are underneath the water, which we have the kinesthetic disruption with the water. She's looking for a calmness herself. Um, very interesting new levels of, of interface um, created. Um, and guess what she used? She used Maximus V, the VPL. So there's an initial composition, which is what I want you people to do. Um, you can experiment with your cell phones too in creating different patterns. Balance. Emotions, which takes us back to an inspection of the um, Stanislavskian school of emotions. Uh, surging through our body while we're trying to, to deal with um, a script out of Chekhov or King Lear or so forth. Um, so we talked about the difference between the Brechtian presentational and the method acting, which is seductive. We're trying to enter into some other person's world with a degree of empathy. Now that we have the attention span of goldfish or less, Goldfish attention span lasts seven minutes, ours or less. Um, this is more difficult. Both things are diff difficult to do. The presentational sense 
um, which we're surprised when we see the shock value of Stellark uh, putting a, a surgically implanting an ear cartilage and scaffolding on his arm and speaking into it with a permanent cell phone. Um, I have another note, uh, NYU professor with the NYU professor professor with camera on the back of his neck. Walaf Bilal. Oops, sorry. Back. Um, no, why did I go back? I did not go back. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, this thing gets so... Um, NYU professor with camera on the back of his head. Um, uh, CNN, let's see what they got of him. New York Prep installs camera on the back of his head permanently. Um, all right, uh, uh, Brechtian against method. Method is a, a, a thing to reapply so that we um, get in touch with emotions, uh, find some sort of common language in emotions. Um, the great 40s, 50s, 60s actors, Brando, Newman, all these new crop of post-Hollywood guys became method actors. Marilyn Monroe studied at these Stella Adler, all these schools. Against the Brechtian sensibility is, hey, we've got a rabbit hole to show you. What do you think? What do you think in it? Um, Two methods are valid, but then there's this other thing that emerges. Namjoon Pak, Lisa Park, um, Stellark, this guy, um, uh, uh, Wafa Bilal, an Iraqi-born photo a photogra a photography professor at University's Tisch, Duhl, Tisch School at Prava. Procedure done at a piercing studio last month in project commissioned by a museum in Doha, Qatar. Uh, we will expose the unspoken to conditions we face. A project like this is meant to establish a dialogue about surveillance, yes. Um, but I think he was legally asked to turn his camera off when in... Oh, God, come on. Uh, let's go back. Because um, it is not allowing me to do this. Um, uh, professor's body rejects camera implant. Uh, let's see, day one. Um, actually, can't load Google Maps correctly. He had put a GPS in it. Um, Uh, here are the the ideas they're putting it in his head um, uh, there it is surgically on his head uh, calibrating it um, watching people behind him um, there you go like um, Stellark there's a degree of shock value Let's get back, and now we have experiments with Google. We have all these sound um, uh, systems to pl play with. Um, shapes. Uh, um, and it's supposed to move, uh, but it is... Yeah. So even in the JavaScript, I can to establish um, the the idea of, of try patterns.
um, interesting interfaces. From the interface of ear on your arm surgically, surgically implanted camera, EEG on your head, um, Namjoon Pak put televisions on the television bra, famously, on the bosom of Charlotte Mormon as she's playing the cello. Um, what, to what extent do we love, like, um, uh, feel complete with, with um, interface? Um, let's go to, that's fun, let's go to our main objective, believe it or not, was to compare um, Max MSP with um, Garage Van. Let's pop open Garage Van. Um, I prepared a selection. This is more uh, kitschier uh, cycles of fifth. Um, uh, Let's hear it. It was for the class. Uh, evolving space sense, hyperlapse base, Kyoto Night. Kind of like more uh, narrative, more, um, I don't know. Um, I wanted some sort of landscape to recede into the background a little bit. There's your tempo. Um, so GarageBand, like the other DAWs, becomes fun. Let's see what it's doing to our cube. Yes. So we have a blend between Maximus V and GarageBand. Stops. The volume doesn't affect the cue until the drum. I think it takes a little more for it to rev in volume. It's the low bass beat. And let's stop that. Let's uh, lay down something uh, empty project. Um, let's plug in MIDI uh, create. Um, and MIDI board. Let's see if we can with our simple little $50 keyboard and our USB-C um, input. Let's see if we can get this rolling. Um, in one of, on the 16 inch, I've got four ports, um, which I've tried four projectors out with the processor could not handle it. Um, let's see, not, 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 yes. USB C B is what it is. Um, real old school. Maybe that's why it was fifty dollars on YouTube. I mean, on whatever you call. It. So let's go to our favorite synth. We want to create a background, a soundscape. Um, even though EDM bass is is kind of fun. Sonic bass, phantom bass. These are fun. So let's pull out, make a coda, pull it out to 21 bars, um, and let's start to record. One, two, three, go.
Oops. Um, did not like that because defaults with. Stopping it there, bringing our volume down and stopping it, bringing it over. Um, Enigma. Uh, a lot of the, these things are kitschy and cheesy. Um, indulgent. Um, but let's go to the soundscape. We want to put something in the background. We want to add. Um, oops, crush stepper. Oh, that changed. Um, let's make sure that guy's down. Subtle shift scape. I can play certain chords on this. Pretty cool for 50 bucks, huh? Um, still a little kitschy to me, stratosphere. A little more distant. <coughs> Let's add stratosphere. One, two, three. Oh no, I turned him into stratosphere. Sorry. We have to lay down a new track um, using MIDI. Um, going to synths, let's try the, uh, let's get back to EDM bass, dark bass drive, let's hear that play. Kind of a techno thingy going on in back. Stop it, moving on. Let's just lay down some more tra MIDI tracks just to do that ahead of time. And then one um, voice track, which we're going to use uh, Kingler Dialogue with. So here we go. Moving back. Um, uh, let's go synths. Let's go to soundscape. Let's go to stratosphere. And let's back and lay that down. So I laid this down, we can pull it along. Um, let's lay down another one. Um, since again, uh, uh, Rhythmic had some sort of, but. synth bass. Bass patterns. Echolocation. Let's add that one. Going back, starting up.
Um, there it is, the f next track, let's uh, soundscape, we're running out of time, um, almost an hour now, stratosphere, um, pulsating waves, string movements, oh wait, we laid that down. We wanted to remember to take it into your next string movements let's try it could be fun uh, move it all the way back imagine this coming from a surgically implanted ear on your arm go Pull all of these things down. I want you to deal with these um, lines somehow, poetry um, in our audio, which I've embedded. Da -da. Uh, the dialogue from <sighs> from King Lear. Fool tells him, fathers that wear rags do make their children blind, but fathers that bear bags shall see their children kind. Fortune that Aaron whore ne'er turns the key to the poor. Let's try one of these lines. Let's get back here. We did this a couple lectures ago. basically and turn the rest down uh, let's turn not to get a feedback loop let's turn the volume down we're almost out of time um, and go a reason not the need our basis beggars are in the poorest things superfluous. Allow not nature more than nature heeds and nature needs. Man's life is as cheap as a beast. Taking that, turning it, um, let's turn down the beats per, let's see what we have back here. Oops, turn it up. Allow not nature more than nature heeds and nature needs. Man's life is as cheap as. Get back there. Let's. Bring it down into the bass frame by changing C minor, uh, C major, uh, uh, um, B minor. Let's give it a shot. Tempo beat. Stick it here. The reason, not the need. Our basis beggars are in the poorest things superfluous. Again, and now let's go back and see what this actually does to our uh, audio reactive patch. Um, go back, play. The reason, not the need. So there we have the, the audio reactive. Beggars are in the poorest it. things superfluous. Allow not nature more than nature heeds. Not a lot nature of needs. 
man's life movement is on that with volume. But there we go. We covered some of the tops, Nam June Pack, Stellark, Lisa Park, um, a, a whole group of other concrete musicians, um, artists, people trying to blend technology and art together. And that has been this lecture. Um, see you soon. <laughs>